my name is uh, Simon Kent, uh, I'm Design Director on LEGO Boost products. Um, and that product is new, uh, it's a new line for LEGO that's launching in September here. Uh, and it's all about um, giving the kids opportunities to add behaviours to their LEGO boards. That's fundamentally where we start from. And they do that through an app, um, and then obviously coding in the app to add specific behaviours. So for a long time LEGO has had a, a long heritage of kids being creative with physical brick, and of course they still do that with this product. But then we give that added dimension, which makes Boost unique, where they can actually add uh, really finite behaviours. Uh, and when we talk about behaviours, it's only a combination of movement and sound and light. Um, in simple coding blocks, that allows the kids to very easily add behaviours to, to the toolbox. The, the set, we actually call it the Creative Toolbox, so it's one product that's being launched. But within that product, there are five different models that the kids can choose from. And each model caters to a different kind of play type for a range of kids. Uh, the main star of the box, however, is Vernie, uh, the robot. Um, and Vernie is uh, sort of your partner, your friend. Um, he, he or she, depending on how you want to depict it, um, mm -hmm. comes with a personality that, uh, that the kids can then build on uh, through the app experience. And when the kids buy the product, they have to download the app, which is free to download on tablets, on iOS and Android. And everything that the kids need for the experience is contained in that one app, including the building structure. So the building structure is digital uh, in this case. Um, so it allows the kids to just focus on the tablet and the model and the relationship between the two and they don't have to worry about anything else. Is there a difference between the, the, uh, the, the code from a video and a uh, it's similar. Yeah, there there is some there are some differences certainly with the way that we skin the code. So deep down underneath, there are lots of similarities like there are with many coding languages. But uh, on top of it, we've then made it uh, and catered it more towards our purposes. Yeah. So we can show you if you'd like yeah, to, sure. to see the app. So. Basically, when the kids come in, and this, bear in mind this app is still a prototype, uh, this is why we're not launching today, because <laughs> the app is still uh, being developed. Uh, this is what we call like the lobby, or the main area, the main menu area. And in here you can see the five different models. So we have uh, Vernie, uh, the robot. We have the Guitar 4000 that you, you saw earlier being demoed. Um, we then have the MTR4, which we have here, the multi tool Ready 4. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, uh, this is all about <coughs> adding different tool attachments to the front here and then this lifts up and so forth okay. so kids can drive around with this. We then have uh, Frankie, the cat, um, where we use all the, the motor and the sensor hardware to really make Frankie seem alive uh, in the kids' eyes and uh, if you haven't already you should go down to the booth for a demo in particular of Frankie. And then we have the auto builder which is uh, this here which is basically a, a Lego built <laughs> 3D printer that builds little Lego models for you. Mm -hmm. So it actually builds these little mini vernies. Uh, you lay out the five bricks that's inside of Mini Verney on this pallet here, so this pallet can move back and forth. And then you have this arm, if I turn it around it's easier for you guys to see from the camera. You have this arm that basically picks the bricks up, moves them to the end here, puts them down, and then eventually you build a little... Uh, a little okay. Model. So, five very different models with different play experiences. If we go into... yeah, and that's, uh, are printed? Yes. No, no stickers? No stickers. In the whole set? Yeah, there's three prints actually that are unique. Yeah. It's the Mini Verney face, so yeah. it's like a junior version. Yeah. Okay. This one, which is the play emblem that you'll see in the coding. Okay. And then we have, and this is a bit more generic, so this, you, you'll probably yeah. see this being used in other Lego lines. This is an arrow to mm -hmm. indicate where there are some functions. Uh, exactly, so it's just to imply that this actually lifts up. Or is this a sticker? No. No, this is, a, this is actually just a sticker for the hardware. Okay. So that wouldn't be on the final. Oh, okay. That's just so that we know which number of hardware it is. <laughs> okay. So you don't need to worry about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, if we go into Vernie, this is then Vernie's menu. So each model has a menu. And mm -hmm. initially, the one at the top is actually their building instructions. So this is locked right now. And there's a really nice story with the building instructions for the models because uh, for the younger age of kids, so we're aiming for the age of seven for, for the product, this is quite. Uh, a lot of time, if they were to build this in one sitting, mm -hmm. it takes them quite a long time. So we've broken it up into three steps. So initially they build Vernie's uh, sort of torso, so his upper upper body and his shoulders. They build his head, and there's a motor controlling his head movements. Mm -hmm. You'll see it a little bit later. And then the kids, through the app, 
they'll be taken then out of the building instructions and prompted to turn in Granny on. And then he'll actually wake up and he'll start talking to the kids. Okay. He'll, start, he'll start that bonding process or that relationship with, mm -hmm. with the children. And then he'll suggest going for a drive, but you haven't built his tracks yet. So he'll just vibrate on the table and he'll say that something's probably wrong. Okay. And then he'll motivate the kids or he'll prompt the kids that maybe they, they should continue building and they finish his tracks. And we think it's pretty neat that the, we believe for the first time it's there's a model telling the kid to continue to keep building. Okay. So we have a VM, we have a controller, we have a sensor, yes. and a motor. There's a motor up here. So there's actually th yeah, exactly. three, three, special three, it's three unique pieces of hardware okay. in here. Yeah. And this, this bigger one down here is the main one. So that's the one that has the connection with the tablet. Okay. It also, if you can see, it has the connection with the, in these ports to the sensor and the motor. Yeah. And then it also has two motors at the bottom, which are individually driving the, these tracks. Okay. It also has a tilt sensor in it as well, okay. which I can show you how we utilize that cool. later as well. So once the kids have built Verney, they're actually then able to explore these different activities. And the activities are set up to um, to sort of guide the kids through a particular feature that Verney can do. In particular, this one is about shooting. Mm -hmm. So when you go into this, there are then three activities, and I've unlocked them all now. <laughs> okay. But initially, you would start with this one, and then you'd have to explore this one, and then this one, and so forth. Okay. And you can see that they're sort of they're set around a theme. So later on, he becomes a cowboy. And later on, he becomes a policeman. And in particular, with the policeman, you get then some accessories, and you saw this in the demo earlier. Okay. A lot of the activities aren't just the kid playing on the tablet all the time, and the model is then playing okay. on its own. You want to re-engage the kids to play with the bricks again. So a lot of the activities involve building little accessories, in this case, for Bernie, mm -hmm. and then you can them some oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, like that. In, this, uh, in the other set of activities that we have currently in the app, so there will be more, obviously, in the final app, this is about being a performer, and here you can see that he does a little dance, then he does some stand-up comedy, and this one is actually still locked. Okay. Eventually he becomes a rapper. A rapper? Yeah. <laughs> a dancer, right? And uh, to do stand-up comedy, he needs, he needs a little bow tie. Ah, okay. Yeah, which is actually, uh, so there's a lot of ways that the kids can actually uh, change his personality okay. through the accessories that they can add. And of course, we give them certain accessories, but then the idea is it's also to inspire them to build their own accessories. Okay. So how, how many how many pieces uh, do you get if you buy the... The total set is a, about 840 okay. uh, bricks. Um, in Verney there's about 500. Okay. And then the rest are some of his accessories. And then the rest are also for the kids to... But, but you can build. only build one one, uh, one, 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 one at a time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So in total we have how, how, many, how many bricks? In, in 843 I think it is in total. 843. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's a sizable amount, actually. Oh. Um, and that's including the three pieces of hardware. Yeah. And uh, you'll see as well, and you can even see it on, on the model, some bricks of, uh, are specific colours to stand out. Mm -hmm. So this is red, for example. So there's little hints of red, and you can actually, on the bottom, again, you can see little bits of yellow. Yeah. And this is very deliberate. For like younger age of kids, by having, because predominantly he's white, blue, black, grey, okay. and so forth, and orange. Um, so we've made key elements we've then made in a brighter colour so that when the kids open the bags they can easily find the bricks. Okay. And we do this for all of our LEGO models uh, for, for this age, uh, yeah. but for Verney in particular it's, uh, it was very important that they, they, they have the right building experience. And actually with Verney in particular he's number pre-packed as well, so we know that the vast majority of the kids will start with uh, Verney. Yeah. So he is he's, um, set up in pack build uh, packs, if you're familiar with other yeah. lines where we have a number of pre-packed yeah, bags, sure. he's set up for that. Okay. So it's very easy for the kids to... Uh, to what about the guitar? Uh, in terms of pre-packed? No, yeah, from in terms of favourite, favourite model. Uh, my favourite? Yeah. Um, Actually, the guitar isn't my favourite. Um, I'm not. I'm not a musician for the start. So, um, I actually really like Frankie, the yeah. cat, and also uh, Bernie. The ones okay. where I think we really push the limits of, of making a model seem as though it's alive. Okay. In the project, we actually call it Smoke and Mirrors. Mm -hmm. We saw a lot in the in the testing with the kids that immediately they they sort of form a bond with the model. Mm -hmm. And we had a, a nice story of a little girl. I think she was about seven. And she, uh, uh, she was introduced to the, the model by the moderator, mm -hmm. and the moderator said, this is Vernie the robot, and then, then the moderator went to the other models, and then after a while, the moderator said, well, let's go back to the robot, mm -hmm. and the girl was like, no, 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 his name's Vernie, 
So she'd already made that connection in about a 20 minute uh, time period. So uh, and I think that was one of the triggers for us to, uh, to sort of play more on yeah. that emotional relationship that, that the model has with the kids. There are a lot of new parts. Like that one uh, here, or that one here. They're not new. No? No. Okay. Uh, this is an existing element, but it's, it's new in this colour. Okay. Yeah, yeah and sure. this, uh, I don't know, this isn't new in that colour, so yeah. it, it is available. Okay. Yes. Oh. Yes. Why yeah. this blue and uh, orange? What was the decision to do, use these colours? Um, just just from our sort of, uh, certainly from some testing with some kids, we, we also wanted to look for a colour scheme that wasn't too boy. Uh, so we didn't want a dark colour scheme, we wanted a friendly, uh, approachable colour scheme for, for girls as well as boys. Um, and then that was a, sort of, that led us in this direction. Um, and then we just tweaked it a little bit. Um, and this colour blue is actually, it's, it's actually, in my personal opinion, it's nicer than the traditional blue, uh, which I don't think we have any. The, the, tr the normal, the standard Lego blue is a bit darker. This is brighter, it's a bit fresher. And then the combination with the orange really makes it pop as well. And then, of course, as I said earlier, we need to make sure that the element overview, when you look at it from the kids' perspective, is multicolored so that they can find the elements uh, in the bricks in the, in the right way. So that's that's sort of how we came to the color scheme. So we use the orange to really pop out key parts like his his uh, his thread. Mm -hmm. um, for example, if this was black, it would be hard to see if the kids can see if it's in his thread or not. So. What we can do now, so he's on already, so we can show you, uh, I've set up some simple code already that you can have a look at. So the coding is um, also being developed, uh, like I said, for the younger age, um, in these blocks. So down here in green we have basic movement commands, so we can just make him move forward. And he'll move forward. What, one is one step? or One, one is one move. step, yeah, okay. so if we put two, okay. he'll, he'll move, oh hang on, sorry. He's come out of that. If we put two, he'll actually move longer. Um, so he's calibrated. His calibration is basically actually his, his wheelbase length. Yeah. So the kids can get okay. So that's that's a certain amount. Um, so we can. I've, I've movements. I have movements. Uh, you have movements. Voice. You have voice. Yes. So I've, I've set up this one here. So these are these are all voice uh, commands uh, in here. So you can get it. These are jokes. These are uh, music. These are uh, these are questions. So yeah. he can actually talk to you and ask you questions. So I need to turn the volume up. What is your name? Simon. That's a nice name. So it comes from the. Okay. Yes, yeah. exactly. So the sound comes from the, the tablet. And we're also, with this block, we're actually utilising the microphone in the tablet as well. Okay. So what this is doing is it asks me a question, what was my name? It's then waiting for a response. Okay. But it doesn't know what I'm saying, it just knows a spike in sound. Okay. And then that then triggers the next block, which can be then your answer to, okay. the, to the response. Can you, can you tell him to, uh, to move forward? No, you, no. Can't, you okay. can't control him with your voice. You okay. could. Um, you can actually. So step that's back, not move quite forward. true. That's not true. I. But you. Uh, you can trigger him. You can trigger him. So you can do this. Ah. Cool. <laughs> so for that, right now instead of the clap, right now I'm triggering him with my voice. But you can. Uh, you can do that. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> so. And now, and he'll, he'll keep doing that until you turn it off. There's also also just to make make use of some of the other uh, functions. The, the sensor technology is really nice. So in his, I think it's very tired. You can see it a bit better. In his chest, we have a, a sensor, mm -hmm. and this senses distance, but it also senses color. Yeah. And right now, I have it set up so that if I move my hand closer to him, ah, okay. Us, and then you can just keep doing this. So you can use it as a distance sensor. So at a point it then triggers, or you could set it up, so I could set this number to be a bit bigger. So now it's, now it's 10, so my hand gets triggered further out, and then okay. you can use it as a motion. So if your sister walked past, mm -hmm. for example, you could uh, make Bernie react like that. There's also the tilt sensor. So the tilt sensor is this one here. <coughs> if I turn him this way, an alarm goes off. Ah. So you can see that I've, uh, you have uh, options to, to orientate uh, Vernie in different ways. So we could turn it the other way around. 
And then if I do this, it sets it on. So it's a really wide range of, of possibilities. Exactly. Yeah. And it's very, you know, a lot of, and initially, of course, for the kids, there's loads of stuff in here. And that's why we have the activity. So we only introduce the kids to a number of blocks at a time. Okay. They can then learn how to use those blocks. Mm. And then they accumulate those blocks in the free play area. And then they're allowed to, then they can use them for their own, their own uh, programs for the model. Okay. So I'm really impressed. Thank you. I can't wait to, to have it in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What was the designing process? Well, you are, you're a designer. Yes. You designed uh, the Lego part or yes. the, you programmed the app? No, I, I, I look after the whole team that works on both components. How many people um, worked on this? There are, well, in total, uh, it's hard to, to guess because there's lots of different departments at Lego that play a role in this. In the project team itself, where there's maybe 12 members. Mm -hmm. and within the design team itself, there's six members. So we have uh, computer engineers whose job it is to make sure that the hardware uh, works, that the firmware and the hardware works. Um, they also have a lot of knowledge about coding as well. We then have a UX designer whose job it is, is to marry the experience between these two and specifically work in a digital area and work on the tone of voice of the app. We then have a UI designer that works with that UX designer on the graphical components. And then we have a number of model builders that work on the actual physical models and the, the model appeal and the kids and stuff like that. You work together with the group of Mindstorms and we do, or is these separated? We, we work next door to our Mindstorms colleagues. But, uh, and, and we obviously we do have uh, meetings and we, we do, um, but they are in a different physically they're in a different building from us. Um, but yes, we work in close. So it's it's completely different. Also, all the uh, elements and so on. Yes. The programming, it's not uh, an upgrade or a downgrade of one no. It's completely it's a completely and separate. Yes. Yes. What's quite nice about it is that uh, certainly from a coding point of view, if you start with Boost, it sets them up really nicely to go into Mindstorms because it's simple for Mindstorms. So if they learn about basic coding principles with Boost, it sets them up perfectly for a, a Mindstorms experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are the next steps? Are there expansions, packs, plans? The idea is that um, with this one product, we will do a number of upgrades to the app where there'll be more activities for the five existing models. We're also going to um, upload new, uh, what we call bases. Um, so part of the experience um, that will come also with the initial launch is you get these three, uh, what we call bases, as part of the Creative Canvas area. And these bases, one of them is like a walking base, so it walks along, but it's not a finished model. It's just the mechanism to make it walk. And the idea is we give the kids the building instructions to make that model walk. We give them the coding blocks to make it actually walk, but then they can finish it off to however they want it to be styled. So if they want to make it into a dog or a cat or a rabbit or a dinosaur or whatever, they can do that. So it's our way of actually giving the kids an initial helping hand into making their own creations uh, come to life. And with the updates, we will add more of those, uh, what we call creative canvas bases, uh, different, different forms. So right now we have three. We have the walking one, we have a driving base that the kids can turn into a Nexa Knights vehicle if they want, mm. if they're into Nexa Knights, or a fire truck if they're into city. And then we have a, a like a gate for a, a, an entrance gate, which mm. kids can make a fort or a castle, uh, and, then, and then use the coding to make it come alive. Yes. So there will be more updates in that area, and it's what we have planned. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so. What is your name? Yeah. <laughs>